Okay, another one from a, a separate source here. This problem has to be all about the enthalpies of entering and leaving steam conditions, which have to be looked up in the steam tables, correct? I don't know. <laughs> Am I the only one that hates steam and quality problems? <laughs> um, I think there's some frustration building up. I, I get it. Um, I've taken the PE several times now, and every time I burn so much time on these types of problems, and I end up just guessing the answer, which is never a good idea. Yeah, that's that's to be avoided if we can. I need to get a grasp on these ASAP. Please help. Yeah, all right, let's just break it down. Um, an eight inch pipe carrying 35 PSIG saturated steam enters a 250 foot long steam tunnel that is ventilated to maintain 80 degrees. The insulation has fallen off the piping in the tunnel, leaving bare schedule 40 piping. The heat loss of the bare pipe is 1,235 BTU per hour per linear foot. If the steam flow rate entering the tunnel is 1,000 pounds per hour, the quality of the steam when the pipe leaves the tunnel is most nearly what? And we have some notes here from the solution, which we can refer to, but let's try to frame out this problem as best we can. We'll do some annotation. So we have this pipe underground. And what do we know? We know that we have this entering steam, which is saturated. So that quality at the entry point is one. And we wanna know the quality when it exits. That's our goal. We also know that the pressure in the pipe is 35 PSIG, which if I can just take the liberty of adding on 14.7 PSI to get to absolute, um, just round to 15, let's say that it's uh, 50 PSIA inside there. And we also know that we have an eight inch pipe. I don't know that we need that information. It could be some extra information here. And that there's a length of 250 feet that we will need because we know the heat loss per linear foot. So let's jot down that number, that heat loss. So this number is gonna be important to us. Let's call this Q dot loss. And then we also know the mass flow rate coming in is a thousand pounds per hour. So that's another good thing to know, M dot. And we want to know the leaving quality. So I think the guiding principle here is that there's some amount of energy entering the pipe, then there is losses, and then there's the amount of energy that leaves the pipe. So this isn't a formula, you won't find this anywhere, but I think this is the big idea behind this problem is that Q1, if I can call this entering condition state one and this leaving condition state two, Q1 minus however much heat is lost, that Q loss that we just found is going to be equal to the amount of heat that's left over at the end. That just makes intuitive sense, right? Whatever doesn't make it to the end because it gets lost along the way isn't there anymore. And um, we can look up based on the pressure, since we know the quality at the entering condition, we can find out exactly what the enthalpy is at state one. And then we can find out um, what we could find is this, this is saturated steam coming in. So why don't we say for Q1 that it's the mass flow rate times the enthalpy, and we should be able to quantify the amount of energy at the start point. So we'll, let's start with Q1. I'll just work on that by itself. Q1, Q.1 is the mass flow rate times the enthalpy. What is the enthalpy at state one? It's gonna be H sub G because it's a saturated steam, saturated vapor, right? And that we can look up because we know the pressure and the quality. So I'm actually gonna quantify that number. 
That's a thousand pounds per hour. Times 1,174. So that gives us BTU per hour, 1174. Zero, zero, zero units BTU per hour. Okay, so we know the first term. Now for the second term, Q loss, we know it's 1235 BTU per hour per linear foot. So let's go a little more detailed there. Q dot loss, 1235 BTU per hour per linear foot our foot, both in the denominator, times the number of feet, 250 feet is the length of pipe. So for every foot, more losses. Feet cancels and we get BTU per hour, which is the right units for the losses. If we're gonna be subtracting that, right? They gotta have the same units. So that's 308,000. And now this problem is starting to make sense. Q2 is going to be the difference between those two. So I'll spare you the subtraction. 1174 minus 308 is going to be 865. So Q2 then, Q.2 is 865,250 BTU per hour. And now let's make sure we're answering the question question is what's the quality leaving well the quality when we were dealing with that um if we know the enthalpy we can know the quality right because it's the pressure is known 50 psia so what we really want to know is the enthalpy at state two the mass flow rate hasn't changed it was a thousand pounds per hour coming in so whatever that m dot is that's constant throughout the piping it says there's heat loss in the tunnel but it doesn't say that there's any steam actually being lost. So the full mass flow rate is carrying through. So we can set this equal to M dot times H2, where M dot is still a thousand and H2 is what we wanna know. And then we can find out that H2 is just dividing by a thousand here. So I'm not gonna show it separately, but obviously it's 865.2 BTU per pound. And now earlier when we were looking up the enthalpy HG, I grabbed that value of 1174 from the same line in the steam table. You can also look up HF and HFG. And this is at 50 PSIA still. And those numbers are 250 and 924. And then the last step is to find the quality, which is based on the actual enthalpy at state two, 865, and these two values that we need to find the quality. And I'm just about running out of space here. Maybe I'll just jump over to the next slide. Okay, so the quality formula, if you're just getting started, you may not have this memorized yet, but you will. Um, H2, which is the enthalpy at the state we're interested in, minus HF over HFG. I'll skip the units because everything's BTU per pound. So that's 865 minus 250 over 924. And that turns out to be about 0.666. And if I go back a slide, that's answer choice B. So I don't know, <laughs> we answered the question, right? We walked through that. I think you could break that down and step through that. What I don't know is, uh, you know, if this satisfies the broader concern here of burning so much time on these types of problems, I didn't time that, but you know, we just spent about, I'd say less than 10 minutes going through that. Now I looked at this yesterday and I tried not to look at the answer solution my first time through it. 
I probably spent more than 10 minutes maybe, but I didn't spend more than 20 minutes, you know? So let's say it was 15, um, you know, and I solved these problems all week long. So um, there are going to be problems that take you longer than six minutes. And I think you have to be okay with that. Kind of have to come to terms with that. There's also going to be problems that take you 30 seconds because you just look at it and it's like you either recognize it or you don't, or <laughs> like, even if you don't know the answer, you're not going to waste time on it because it's just like a knowledge question or something like that. Um, we spend a lot more time in this program doing the quantitative stuff because it has the potential to take a long time. And I, I just don't want you to be overwhelmed or intimidated or thinking every problem is going to be a 15 or 20 minute problem. Um, but you have to have that extra gear to, to go deep um, and to work through a more interesting problem like this when it comes up. So don't give up.